Hey everyone, Steve from Backcountry Gallery here. Have you ever been in a situation where you had two or more animals in the frame and even though they were relatively close together, you couldn't get them both sharp? Today, I'll show you a combination Photoshop and field technique that can sometimes overcome that problem. First, it's important to identify when you'll actually need the technique I'm about to show you. So let's talk about the normal way to do this. The normal way to get two animals sharp at once is to photograph them from an angle that puts the plane of focus on both of them at the same time. These two elk were on the same plane of focus, so there was no issue keeping them both sharp, even with the lens wide open. The second normal way of keeping two animals sharp is stopping down or using a shorter lens like I did in this shot with these two elephants. Of course, this still works best when the animals are on the same focus plane or, you know, at least kind of close to it. Where we get into trouble is when you have small to medium sized subjects at relatively close range. So let's take this image here, for example. We have these prairie dogs. Let me zoom in a little bit. And as you can see, we have these three here. This was taken with my 600 millimeter lens. If I zoom in a little bit closer, you can see a problem. This guy is sharp and this guy is sharp. Their heads are close to the same plane of focus here because his head is sticking out a little bit. But if you look at the guy in the back, guess what? He's not sharp at all, is he? And if you look at the distance from this eye to this eye, it's what maybe like a, a prairie dog width away. It's not a big difference here in distance, but you can see this isn't even close to being critically sharp. Again, this was with a 600 F4 and you might say, well, Steve, why didn't you just stop down to F8 so you can get this guy in here? Well, guess what? This was taken at F13 and it still was not enough to bring this back guy into focus. And that's the problem when you have multiple animals in a frame, especially at close range or when you have smaller animals that you're filling the frame relatively well with, small and uh, medium sized animals even, you can run into this problem where just a few inches here can make a big difference and you just can't stop down enough to get everything in focus. And it brings up another problem here too. If you take a look, my background is relatively busy compared to what it would be had I shot this at F4. So there's a couple advantages to the technique I'm about to show you that kind of solves both of those problems at once. So let's continue on. My solution? I focus stack. I focus on the first animal, shoot a quick burst, then focus on the second animal and do another burst. I then take the two images and combine them in Photoshop, as you'll see in just a few moments. However, as you can guess, there are some downsides to this and it doesn't always work. First, the animals need to be relatively close together or you'll have a big out of focus gap between them. Ideally, you don't wanna see a ton of softness between the first animal and the second. You want a little overlapping of that depth of field. Note that it doesn't have to be perfect, but the closer the better. Second, you obviously need a set of animals that isn't gonna to move too much between the shots. Most of the time, I can pull this off in just a few seconds. However, if an animal moves too much, it's not gonna work. In fact, I wasn't able to do it with the prairie dog example I showed you just a moment ago. Third, you need to stay in position. If you move from your position, it changes perspective and makes the chances of pulling this off much, much lower. Finally, make no mistake, sometimes this technique just doesn't work. The animals are too far apart, you move, they move. Figure a 50-50 chance most of the time. Still, it's often the only option and it's better than skipping the shot. Let's talk about how to do it. Field technique. The field technique is easier than you may think. Most people worry that you have to be completely precise, but the key is that for wildlife, for wildlife, you really don't need two perfectly aligned shots. You're basically just gonna have one primary image and blend that image with the sharp parts of the second shot. We're gonna use this image as an example, and there's actually kind of two lessons in one here. First though, a little bit of background. I took this image with a monopod, a 600F4, 1.4 teleconverter, and D6. It doesn't sound too bad, but I was in a precarious position on the side of a steep hill that was a mix of rocks and mud, all of which were conspiring to send me end over end all the way down to the bottom. In fact, I think I saw my wife checking my life insurance policy at one point while I was down there. It was apparent that there was no way to get both the hen and the chick sharp in one click, so I knew I needed to focus bracket. I started with the mother and placed one of my upper AF points on her eye and fired a burst. This resulted in a little bit of the tail getting cut off, but I knew I'd get that full tail when I went for the chick. Now, due to my unstable situation, I feared that if I focused and recomposed that I would maybe push the lens forward or back a little bit and knock the eye out of focus. So I kept my AF point on the eye with autofocus engaged and shot my burst to ensure a sharp eyeball. 
Next, I adjusted my composition so my current AF point was right on the check. When you have subjects that are touching like this, it's critical to get the shot before one of them moves and using the same AF point is the fastest way to do it. Now, if I think I have a little more time and if I'm in a little more stable situation, I'll move the AF point instead. In fact, that's my preferred way to go. However, in this case, the little chick was really antsy and I already had missed a few attempts, so I had to be quick. By the way, if the animals are touching, especially with one a little behind the other, it's far more difficult to pull this off. After all, if one of the animals moves, how much of each animal is blocked or in contact with the other can change. However, if you have separation between the subjects, it's not as critical since the space between them acts as a buffer. In fact, if the two animals aren't touching, one or the other can you know, move its head around, change a pose, whatever, and you can still usually pull it off. Post processing. Next, let's put these two images together. We'll start in Lightroom. Okay, so I'm gonna demo this in Photoshop for you. So the first step is to find our images. I have them selected right here, or at least chosen so far. So I'm gonna select them now. I'm gonna give this one a click. I'm gonna hold the Command or Control key down and click this one. That will allow me to select both of the images. Then I'm gonna right click, you can do it on either one of them. Go down to Edit In and open as layers in Photoshop. Now I'm using Lightroom for this, so I'm able to do this. I don't know what raw processor you're using, so you may have to open the images up as just images in Photoshop and then drag and drop them one on top of the other. But since I'm using Lightroom, and I think a lot of the people watching this are probably using Lightroom, we're gonna do it this way. Open as layers in Photoshop. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop, and as you can see, our images have been loaded in as layers. If I turn the top one off though, you can see we have a problem. They are not aligned at all. They're not even close. And again, as I said before, this is not a problem. It looks like a major problem, but it's really not. So all we have to do here is make sure these are both selected. So I'm going to click one of them and hold my shift key down and click the other one. I have them all selected. Then I'm going to go to the edit menu and I'm going to auto align layers. Give that a click. Use auto. That works most of the time. Works really well. Hit OK. And not only did Photoshop line up our two layers for us, it also expanded the canvas. Let me zoom down a little bit here. It also expanded the canvas for us so that we have both of the images included. That's usually the easiest way to do it. However, it doesn't always work. Sometimes if you try to line them up like this and it just doesn't work out, the other way to do it is to drop opacity on one of the layers, like so. And then you can take the Move tool drag that around and line it up yourself if you need to. But I always recommend trying the auto align option first, just because if it works, it's very quick and it's very easy. And most of the time it does work. So I'll put the opacity back up. As a quick side note, if you do need to manually move the pictures around like I just showed you by lowering the opacity in that, make sure that you're concentrating on the area that you're going to be correcting or the, you're going to be working on. Basically, in this case, it's the little chick. So that would be the area that I would want to line up because sometimes the whole thing won't line up perfectly and you'll drive yourself crazy trying to get it there. But in this case, I would just be worried about whether or not that little chick was lined up and not worry about the rest because I, I don't necessarily have to use everything from that particular image. I'm just concerned about that little chick right there. So our next step is to get all the sharp parts together for these two layers. And usually I use layer masks for that. However, there is another way I'm going to show you. I'm going to select both of these again using the shift key here. I'm going to go to edit and auto blend layers. And you can actually use the stack images option. And I'm going to do content aware fill and it'll take care of those transparent areas. Now, in theory, this seems like it's going to be a really good idea. The computer will actually, Photoshop will actually do all the hard work for us. But the problem is, it's a little bit less than ideal. And I'm going to show you, this is what happens a lot of times when I try this particular setup here, this particular option. If you notice, we have some double images going around the beak. Some of this is soft, some of the sharp, it just didn't do a very good job. And I find that's very typical with wildlife. Sometimes you can make that work. Most of the time you can't, but I figured if I didn't at least mention it, someone's going to say, why didn't you just, you know, auto blend those layers? This is why. So if you're tempted to do that, this might be a good reason why not to. So I'm going to go back in history here and get us back to where we were. Okay, so the way I would normally do this is with layer masks, and it's actually pretty easy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a layer mask here, and then I'm going to reveal the layer underneath with a sharp chick. So let's talk about that. The first step is to put a layer mask in. So we're going to click this layer mask, and that puts a white layer mask here. This is letting everything on this layer still show through. White reveals and black conceals. So anything I paint on here in black is actually going to hide stuff on this layer and let 
the stuff on the bottom layer, which is the sharp stuff here for our little guy right here and the log and even the tail, all that's going to show through. So the idea here is we're going to grab our brush. We're going to make sure it's a nice soft brush. Hardness is at zero. Opacity is at 100%. All of that is good. We're going to make sure black is on the top right here. If you don't see that, hit the letter D and then the letter X and that'll bring you right up to black. And from here, we're just going to do a little bit of painting. We're going to make sure our layer mask is selected over here. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit and watch what happens when I paint over that little chick. As I'm painting with black, we're hiding the autofocus chick on the top layer and letting the sharp little chick on the bottom layer show through. I'm going to go a little bit smaller. Whenever you get to these transition areas, you want to use a little bit smaller brush when you're transitioning from one part of the image to the other. I'm going to go down here. If you notice, these feathers are a little bit sharper right in through here where the chick is, or on the chick layer. We can call it the chick layer, I guess. And I'm just going to go right to the edge here. You have to find those little boundaries when you're trying to manually blend two different sharpness levels between a couple of images here. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going along those edges here. And I'm going to use a little bigger brush here and get this log. There we go. That looks pretty good. We have a nice sharp little chick. And mom's looking nice and sharp because we're not hiding mom. Here's what our layer mask looks like if I give this a click. You can see that mom is actually completely in the clear here. We're not hiding her at all. So I'm going to go down here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my brush tool. And I'm going to hide all of this layer right here, all of this part of this top layer. So we're seeing this bottom area here. So this is the stuff that I want. I want this nice tail here, and I want all of this. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm just going to use my brush painting black again. And I'm just painting right over all this. There we go, just like that. Now I have the tail in there, it looks really nice. And you can see the layer mask once again, if you look over here, I'll show it up there. You can see that it's taking all the information here and it's letting us see that, which is what we want. Now we have one little cleanup thing to do here. If you notice, we have this line right along this edge here. And of course we don't want that. So what we're gonna do is go back to our brush. Once again, double check, make sure it's black, make sure your layer mask is selected, all that good stuff. And we're just gonna brush over this like so, just to kind of get rid of that. And it usually goes away just like that. It's usually pretty easy. These soft brushes work really well for that. By the way, you do have to be careful though. If you go too far, you'll start in this case, getting into some blank area. And the reason it's blank is because our layer mask, let me show you, is going all the way up there. It's covering that area up, but we don't have any information from our bottom layer here. This is all blank on the bottom layer. So there's nothing to actually show there. So that's why that's disappearing like that. So you do have to be careful of that as you're doing it. If you see something like that, you've just gone too far is all it means. So from here, I would make a composite layer, which is Command or Control, Option, Alt, Shift, and the letter E. I'll put that keyboard shortcut up for you. So from here, I would just kind of do my finish work. I would fill some of these areas in if I wanted them to. I'd probably crop first, kind of get it to the crop that I want, something about like this. So after you crop, sometimes you run into the problem that you see right here. We have some of these blank areas that we need to take care of. In this case, just an edge along the top here and this spot right here. And not the end of the world and honestly, not very uncommon. This happens all the time with this technique. So nothing to be concerned about. We just use some content aware fill and it'll be fixed in just a second. The easiest way to do this is with the rectangular marquee tool. You can sometimes use the magic wand tool, but the truth is sometimes you then have to go into select and mask and it just takes longer than it needs to. Just grab the rectangular marquee tool, select the first little area like so, and select outside of the image though. So you're getting that edge right there. You don't wanna miss any part of that edge. That'll make sure that you have all of that. And then I'm gonna go along the top, but I'm gonna hold my shift key down as I do it. And that will add to the existing selection, like so. And you can see we now have this selection and this selection added together. And it just takes a few seconds to do it. Just make sure you leave a few pixels outside. You don't want to be right next to it. You just want to come just outside of the area that you want to fix. So that's all there is to it. Pretty easy. We're going to go to the Edit menu, Content Aware Fill. Let Photoshop work its magic here. That looks good. Hit OK. 
Command or Control D to deselect, and it looks really good. That's all there is to it. Very quick, very easy to do. From here, you would just finalize the image either in Photoshop or Lightroom or whatever your preferred processing software is. In fact, I'll throw up my version of this image. And as you can see, I cleaned up some of the Twiggy stuff and kind of finished up the post-processing there. But the bottom line here is that we started with two separate images, each with a different bird sharp, and we ended up with one single image where both of our birds are sharp, which was our ultimate goal here. So, and it's not too terribly hard to do. Keep in mind that this was just one example. Some images are more difficult, some are even easier. The idea here was not to cover every single scenario, but rather to show you the concept. Although I do want to point out that the less movement in the field from both you and the animals, the easier the post-processing will go. Again, this isn't a technique you can use every time, but hopefully this is another addition you can add to your toolbox when you're out in the field and an opportunity presents itself. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn even more, be sure to check out all of my educational products. Between all of them, there are thousands of pages and dozens of hours of video, all of them jam-packed with information you can use every time you head out to the field. Finally, remember to sign up for my free email newsletter to get even more tips, tricks, and advice. Also, check out the BCG Forums page if you want solid, reliable answers to all your photography questions. And of course, don't forget to like, subscribe, and get notified. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.